Why does the Sony A90J Master Series OLED only have two HDMI 2.1 ports, whereas LG OLEDs have four? In this video, I am going to explain the exact reason and also help you work out whether your future TV purchase decision should be affected by this. Hello everyone, Vincent Dio from HDTV Test here. I'm going to give this video some sort of structure, so first, I'm going to be talking about the number of HDMI 2.1 ports on various 2021 televisions from different manufacturers. After that, I'm going to explain the exact reason why some manufacturers are able to implement 4 HDMI 2.1 ports on their televisions, whereas others can only put 2 HDMI 2.1 ports on theirs. After that, I'm going to explain the importance of HDMI 2.1, whether you should be worried about the lack of HDMI 2.1 ports, depending on your viewing habits and also your mode of consumption. And then finally, I'm going to explain the implications of having only one or two HDMI 2.1 ports on a 2021 television. So let's start off by looking at this table that I've compiled here. Basically, this lists the number of HDMI 2.1 ports that have been implemented by these five manufacturers on their 2021 higher-end TVs. And LG will have four HDMI 2.1 ports. And then next comes Philips. And in their range review, they have said that they will have two HDMI 2.1 ports on their 806 and also 856 OLEDs. And then out of these two ports, one of them will be eARC as well. So if you use eARC functionality on the television, then it means that you will be left with only one HDMI 2.1 port. And then Samsung's 2021 new QLEDs with one connect box will get four HDMI 2.1 ports, whereas those without the one connect box, such as the QN90A in the USA, they will only get one HDMI 2.1 port. And then last but not least, we take a look at Sony and the Sony A90J and also all their Bravia XR range will only have two HDMI 2.1 ports of which one will do eARC duties, which means that if you use the eARC port, which is HDMI 3 for passing lossless audio, it means that you will only be left with one HDMI 2.1 port on HDMI 4. So the reason why there is such difference between different manufacturers is very simple and contrary to what some of you may think, it is not a nefarious scheme by some of these manufacturers to reserve for HDMI 2.1 ports for 2022 model to provide sort of an upgrade to 2021 model. That is not the case. The reason is because Sony, Panasonic, and also Philips, they are actually using third-party SOC for the HDMI 2.1 functionality. And in at least two out of these three cases, I know for sure that they are going to be using the MediaTek chipset. And the MediaTek chipset only has two HDMI 2.1 ports, albeit full bandwidth. So Philips and Sony, they have outright stated that they will only have two HDMI 2.1 ports, which support the full HDMI 2.1 bandwidth of 48 gigabits per second, but one of the HDMI 2.1 port will be eARC. So it means that both of them will be using a similar MediaTek chipset. And the reason why LG and Samsung are able to implement for HDMI 2.1 ports on their 2021 televisions is because they are actually designing their own SOC. They are using their own custom-made SOC. SOC stands for System on Chip, and it is basically the chipset that is responsible for running certain functions on the television. And LG and Samsung, you know, they have been developing their own SOC for some time now, and it gives them sort of a first mover advantage. If you remember from 2019, the LG C9 was the first to market with HDMI 2.1 and not only with HDMI 2.1, with four HDMI 2.1 ports as well. And that gave them an immense advantage in terms of marketing to gamers, in terms of appealing to gamers. And many gamers actually bought up the LG C9 in droves. And this advantage actually held through to 2020 as well, because in 2020, I think MediaTek still did not have the SOC ready to be implemented on Sony, Panasonic, and Philips OLED televisions, which is why in 2020, the Panasonic 
is at 2000, the Sony A8 and also the Philips 935 and also the 805, they were still using HDMI 2.0B chipset without a full HDMI 2.1 support, but that has changed this year. But again, they have to depend on MediaTek, who is a third party supplier to provide the SOC and the SOC just so happens will only support two HDMI 2.1 output and one of it will be ER. So that is the exact reason why LG and Samsung are able to implement four HDMI 2.1 ports this year, whereas Sony, Panasonic and also Philips only implement two. And if you want to ask the question of why did Sony, Panasonic and Philips not develop their own SOC like LG and Samsung? You have to remember that LG and Samsung, they have the biggest market share in the TV market and they have immense resources. Whereas, you know, from the point of view of Sony, from the point of view of Panasonic and also Philips, you know, I think it is generally accepted to be a more efficient process if they focus on their own respective strengths while depending on a third party supplier like MediaTek or maybe even Realtek in the past to give the HDMI functionality. So I need to also stress that even though the Panasonic, the Philips and also the Sony OLEDs are going to be using MediaTek chipsets this year, it doesn't mean that they will all have the same picture quality because in addition to this MediaTek SoC, these manufacturers likely would have implemented their own secondary silicon or a companion chipset which is of their own doing to do further picture processing. So for example, the Brava XR chipset that is implemented on the Sony A90J, it will basically consist of a MediaTek MT5895 SoC which is similar to what we saw on last year's XH90 or X900H but in addition there will be an additional picture processing chip and this will be responsible for the cognitive processing, for the upscaling, for the noise reduction, for the color management, all this stuff that deals with the picture quality which will separate or distinguish one manufacturer's picture processing from another. But again, until I get the chance to actually test these 2021 televisions, you know, it's all conjecture. And I do wish that, you know, I already have some samples to hand. But because of Brexit and because of the delays in customs, I think samples are arriving really late into the UK this year, which is why, you know, I haven't actually got my hands on any 2021 televisions yet. But that is from the point of view of the SOC and I want to just jump back to the case of LG and Samsung again because they are developing their own SOC. I think it is accepted that they have not seen the need for a full bandwidth 48 gigabits per second bandwidth now that we have a few HDMI 2.1 sources on the market which brings me to my third point which is whether HDMI 2.1 is going to be important to you, whether you need HDMI 2.1. And again, I need to stress, and I've stressed before in a previous video, that HDMI 2.1 is genuinely only important if you are a gamer. Basically, you know, only if you are gaming. Because let's assess the market situation here. What sort of HDMI 2.1 consumer sources we have on the market? We have the Xbox Series X, we have the Sony PS5, and then we also have the GPUs from NVIDIA and AMD. So these are the only HDMI 2.1 consumer sources on the market and they are all to do with gaming. So if you're only watching movies, if you're only watching broadcast TV, they will never hit the full bandwidth of HDMI 2.0. So you don't even need HDMI 2.1. HDMI 2.1 is only important for gamers out there. And this brings me to the point of whether LG and Samsung have assessed the market situation. We know that the Xbox Series X only has a 40 gigabits per second HDMI 2.1 chipset. We know that currently the Sony PS5 is only limited to even lower to 32 gigabits per second of HDMI 2.1 bandwidth. So I'm not going to be surprised if let's say LG and Samsung both decide to go with only 40 gigabits per second of HDMI 2.1 bandwidth again this year because you know it's their own custom SOC. They can decide you know at what level they 
develop it. So that is from the point of view of HDMI 2.1. I stress that if you are not a gamer, if you don't intend to purchase or own multiple gaming consoles and PCs, then maybe one or two HDMI 2.1 ports is enough. Now, assuming that you have multiple gaming devices, whether it would be a wise idea to still go for an HDMI 2.1 TV with only one or two HDMI 2.1 ports? And the answer is, it depends. Because, you know, I think we have to assess the situation currently, whether there is going to be any HDMI 2.1 switcher on the market or HDMI 2.1 AV receiver on the market that can allow you to, you know, feed various HDMI 2.1 sources into a single, say, splitter or AV receiver and then feed the video signal to your TV. And I think that it is risky to be depending on that and you may be waiting for some time because currently the entire 2020 and perhaps some 2021 batch of AV receivers, they suffer from a chipset problem which makes them incompatible with 4K 120Hz HDR with the Xbox Series X and maybe there's some kinks and issues with PCs as well. So I'm not entirely sure that an AV receiver will be solving this problem. And also the splitter, they again have to depend on third-party SOC and currently there is still no HDMI 2.1 splitter or switcher on the market at the moment and I'm not entirely sure how long you need to wait. And another thing that you know pops to my mind is let's say you feed three source devices, let's say you have an Xbox Series X, you have a PS5 and you have say an RTX 3090 card, maybe you have like a master scalper friend <laughs> who can help you get all these devices and you feed all of them through to the AV receiver or a splitter and then send one video signal to your TV. But then a difficult situation will arise on whether you will need to switch the picture preset manually. Let me explain. So for playing games, you will generally need to engage game mode for the lowest input lag. And I'm not entirely sure whether these HDMI 2.1 splitters or AV receivers will be able to pass not only ALM metadata to the TV for the game mode to be switched automatically and seamlessly, but also whether they'll be able to pass the VRR metadata for the TV to correctly kick into VRR mode. So these are all unknowns that I'm not entirely sure can be solved. So in my opinion, the cleanest way is to feed the video output from the, your source device directly to the TV, especially if you are gaming. So if you put another intermediary device such as an AV receiver or HDMI switcher in between, you know, who knows whether VRR will work, who knows whether ALM will work, and maybe you will end up having to switch the picture preset on the TV manually. So that is another thing to think about. And I think it gives the LG OLEDs and also Samsung's new QLEDs with one connect box an immense advantage for gamers out there because you know you can directly hook up multiple gaming devices HDMI 2.1 gaming devices to these TVs without having to worry about HDMI switches or AV receivers down the line. For more videos on HDMI 2.1 televisions I've created a playlist here if you'd like to click on it and I'll see you in the next video. Mm -hmm.